بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سعيدين جدا and we're very happy and honored to have to host the uh, G20 meetings for the first time referencing space economy. Saudi Arabia welcomes you and I want to convey special welcome from His Majesty King Salman, the custodian of the two holy mosques, who would have wanted and wished that you all would be in Saudi Arabia today to see our beautiful country, to see how much development has happened in our country over the last few decades and how much we're building for the future. In that regard, that we uh, cannot do that today with my very best wishes for you and your families during this very difficult times of the corona pandemic, we would like to very much invite you all individually with your families or eventually organizing a major space event for you to come to Saudi Arabia in person and to enjoy our country as we wish to enjoy it with you, inshallah, as we say. King Salman is not new to the space issue and he was very keen to make this a part of the agenda of G20 as we go forward in the future. King Salman has participated in the sense of being very close to the very first space mission that Saudi Arabia had an honor to participate in. I be, was honored to participate in the very first space mission in 1985 on the Space Shuttle Discovery in the United States. First phone call was made by King Fahad and King Salman, who is also my father, uh, to me uh, in the space shuttle. So King Salman has followed uh, space issues since that time and still does. In that regard, Saudi Arabia, you can say, although we have the new Saudi Space Commission, which is a major commission that has been established in 2018, but we are not really that new to the space issue. Uh, since 19, even before 1985, Saudi Arabia was a major investor in space and space technology through Arabsat, the biggest investor in Arabsat, which is a major corporation today dealing with communications and television uh, and seeing this uh, huge growth in space uh, uh, technologies. But also since 1985, when we called for the establishment of a space program in Saudi, Saudi has taken many, many steps and, and many strides towards achieving uh, the goal of making its own satellites and participating in so many programs in terms of space. We're also seeing today our region uh, moving forward to the space economy uh, in the sense of uh, some examples I give would be uh, our uh, neighbor, uh, our brother country, Emirates, uh, uh, Emirates uh, with the launching of the very first space mission with my friend Hazza al Mansouri as the first uh, astronaut who so goes to the space station and many other programs for other countries, neighboring countries. Our country is very much being involved with technology and science, we are very much one of the most poised countries that would deserve to be ahead of the game since we have been building uh, great universities, technological institutions, and a lot of effort in investing in human capital especially. When I went on my mission in 1985, we had thir more than 30 Saudi scientists who participated in space uh, experiments and uh, a lot of issues that uh, uh, rose since the space mission uh, then. Saudi Arabia has been building heavily and investing heavily in human capital. And so uh, today, the innovation we see in Saudi, the uh, technological advances, the, uh, the many, many thousands of engineers, doctors, and, uh, and scientists of all uh, specialties, that's an investment that has taken many decades where we stand today. <clears throat> we are going to build on that. I personally <coughs> want to call, uh, welcome you and I very much enjoy having all the heads of the space agencies participating today. We welcome, of course, Italy and India, beautiful countries that we look forward to coming to the next uh, 2020 agendas. Uh, and we would call on them to make space as part of the standing agenda in the next G20, I hope. I also have had the pleasure and the honor of participating in three uh, G20 meetings. Uh, when I was in charge of building the space and heritage of Saudi Arabia uh, sectors over the last uh, 20 years. When I started and, and my colleagues and, and the country started building on tourism and the heritage, we basically uh, looked at them as, or we saw them as very novice uh, and, and out of the uh, circle sectors that could not have economic uh, 
value. Today, Saudi Arabia, as I stand today, looking at some uh, statements by my colleague, the Minister of Tourism now, who is saying that tourism, and I would add the National Heritage of Saudi Arabia, will become probably a second or third economy to oil. So we believed in that. We know how to build economic sectors, and we're going to apply that knowledge to building the space sector and the space economy sector. We're going to be investing a lot, as your countries are, in our relationships. As G20 countries, we call for the G20 countries to uh, invest in the future of this planet, and not just the future of the economies of the 2020 nations. Uh, in the sense that, uh, reflecting on the space mission itself, when I was in space with my colleagues from the US and from France, we all looked at Earth and we all made statements to that regard. Uh, as a member, a founding member of the Association of Space Explorers since 1985, all of us who have flown to space have seen Earth from space. And uh, if I would reiterate my own statement when I was asked and I reflected and I looked at Earth as we passed over Earth ev once every 90 minutes, as seeing uh, 16 sunsets and sunrises every day. Uh, I would say that uh, when I reflected on that, I basically said uh, that uh, for the first day or two, uh, we were pointing to our countries. Uh, by the third day, we were pointing to our continents. But truly, by the fifth day, we were really pointing to one Earth and one planet. This fragile, small planet is basically our home today and will be our home for a long time to come. And the 2020 economies are looked at by the rest of the world as countries that could lead the world to saving this uh, planet in terms of not just the environment, but the resources, the environment, human interaction, settling down human disputes, and basically looking at Earth as a place where we all can come together and live together in, in economic success and in, 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 a, in a clean environment also. So in that regard, uh, we would very much participate over the next uh, few days and few months, a few years, to become part and parcel and to represent our region also. We're working very closely with our allies uh, and, and, and uh, colleagues in the different countries of the region to make sure that we are fully represented and fully participating. Saudi Arabia is not new to international participation. We are probably one of the biggest countries and uh, in participating in everything that has been created in the last uh, practically 70 or 80 years in terms of world organizations, in terms of uh, international relations. The team that meets today is a, is a great asset that uh, will participate today and uh, speak to many issues, as I hope. We in Saudi Arabia will be announcing our strategic plan for uh, space uh, development, and, and we'll be launching a space investment company as we go forward, and launched already a major program for the generations to come uh, Saudi uh, scientists from the ages of four onwards. So uh, we welcome you all. We wish you a, a good conference. And again, I want to reiterate uh, the welcoming by my leadership and by the participants from all Saudi ministries and Saudi sectors for this major event that takes place for the first time. God bless you all. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.